Good morning. So we've been thinking about Jesus and the kingdom. We're going to think about miracles this morning. We started off by thinking about repentance, how we turn away from sin, but more importantly, we turn towards God and put our faith in Jesus Christ. That is what the Bible talks about as salvation, repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ. Everybody who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And uh, there's no better day than to do it than today, because today is the day of salvation. Then we looked at how Jesus was healing everybody and how healing was a massive part of his kingdom message and his kingdom ministry. Throughout the scriptures, God, whose name is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, says to Israel that he is the God who heals them. And here is Jesus bringing the kingdom and demonstrating healing all over the place. Acts gives us a summary that says, Jesus went around doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. Here is God who heals in then last week we looked at deliverance, the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from evil. Jesus is the liberator, he's the rescuer, he's the one who delivers us from what the enemy is seeking to do in our lives. And we see many examples in Jesus' ministry of him delivering people of evil, unclean and impure spirits. And Andrew shared with us, how we are shaped by the kingdom and shaped by the Son. The kingdom is within us, but the kingdom comes through us. And we are those who are saved, and then in the power of the Spirit, being sanctified, made to be more and more and more like Jesus, conformed unto the image of the Son. Paul explains it in Romans 8 and verse 28 and 29 you and I, God is, has begun a good work in you and in me and he will be faithful to complete it, to form and forge the character of Christ evermore in our lives. What a wonderful God. And he is the, a miracle working God. And Jesus is the miracle worker. I say is because he lives and is alive forevermore. He did miracles in his day and he does miracles in our day. The miracle-working God is in our midst. Anytime we gather in Jesus' name, anything can happen. Do you carry that expectation when you come to worship the Lord, when you come to church? Are you coming expectant that God can do anything in our midst? That's the reality. That is the truth. The Gospels record 37 miracles of Jesus. Now, I think that's just a summary. I suspect he did many, many more that are not recorded. John, at the end of his Gospel, says, doesn't he, that uh, if we were to write down everything that Jesus did and everything that Jesus said, there wouldn't be enough books in all the earth to contain them. It's John's way of showing the incredible things that Jesus was doing and saying. Let's have a look at scripture together. Uh, we have a number of scriptures here to read together. Luke chapter 23 and verse 8. Now when Herod saw Jesus, this is at the end of Jesus' ministry, as he sent before Herod, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. Herod knew without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus worked miracles. And in Acts 2, Luke records again, men of Israel, hear these words. This is the testimony of the apostles. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, 
and signs which God did to him in your midst as you yourselves also know. This is the testimony going out to the people of Israel that Jesus was approved, authenticated, shown to be genuinely from God and doing what God wanted through miracles, through wonders, and through signs. Nobody could deny it because the evidence and the testimony and the stories were all around them. Jesus being proved that he was truly who he said. What he says and what he was doing, he was coming from God. Miracles, mighty works of strength and power, wonders, God doing extraordinary things that gets people's attention, and signs, those things that are pointers to remarkable events of what God is doing in and through Jesus. God at work through Jesus, through words, works, and wonders. Then in Mark chapter 9, Jesus speaking to the disciples, but Jesus said, do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterward speak evil of me. This is where the disciples are trying to stop somebody operating in Jesus' name. And Jesus says, don't stop him. If he's soon, if he's recently done a miracle in my name, then how can he soon afterwards speak evil of me? So there were people doing miracles in Jesus' name, even while Jesus walked the earth. So the miracles of God through Jesus and through those who exercise faith and put their trust in him. Well, I thought, how am I going to define what a miracle is to you? So I did a little bit of research. This was the best one I could come up with. A miracle can be defined as a periodic and temporary interference with the laws of nature so that God's presence, power, and purpose might be understood. Many of the definitions of miracles talk about uh, the laws of nature being overcome. But what I liked about this one was that God does miracles to explain, to make clear, to demonstrate his power, his purpose, and his presence. He does miracles for a reason. There are the type of miracles we see in the Bible, there, there are not hundreds and hundreds of them. They're extraordinary. But there are miracles going on all around us every day. I'm a great believer in everyday miracles and extraordinary miracles. And we need to have a hope and an expectation for both. So the miracle happens periodically, temporary, the effects are long-lasting. I wanted to add that bit to it. And, of course, John's Gospel is constructed around seven miraculous signs and seven I am statements pointing to who Jesus is and what the kingdom of God is like. I'm not going to explain those seven signs and seven statements. You can go away and do some homework about that. But a miracle is when God does what is considered impossible from human perspective and according to the laws of nature. We see them throughout the um, Old Testament, the Red Sea, Israel passing through, the yet Pharaoh's army being destroyed through it, uh, manna from heaven, quail, Elijah and Elisha, Elijah does seven, Elisha does 14 miracles, and then a concentration of miracles in Jesus, and then those miracles continued throughout the ministry of the apostles and right throughout the history of the church, and they're still going on today. Some of those miracles are incredible. God put the sun back in Hezekiah's day. That is why we have kind of an extra day in the universe. God stopped the sun moving forward. <coughs> Hezekiah asked for a sign, didn't he? 
how will I know God is going to heal me? And in Luke's Gospel we read, with God nothing is impossible. No word of God will ever fail what he has said. Now, here's the thing. Miracles are wonderful. Signs and wonders are incredible. But they are no guarantee of salvation. Because we see or experience miracles does not guarantee that we will become believers. Greeks seek wisdom and Jews seek signs. And the Jews were constantly asking for signs. There were loads of signs around them, weren't they? They didn't need to ask for any more. Jesus was doing loads. Kept asking for signs, but they didn't believe. But just because we see miracles, it's no guarantee. But they do reveal God's presence, power, and purpose. They are important, and they do help to inspire people to faith. But more importantly, they reveal who God is and what he's doing. Now, how then is the presence, the power, and the purpose of God revealed through miracles? I thought it might be helpful if we thought about what type of miracles do we see Jesus doing in and through the four Gospels. And I've classed them into five different categories which reveal the purpose and of God. So Jesus is doing miracles to show the kingdom breaking in. Heaven coming on the earth, God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. That is what you and I are to be praying for each and every day. Whenever God, heaven breaks into this earth, it's a miraculous thing. Bringing us back into the divine design that God had always had that heaven and earth would be fully united and people living in his perpetual peace and shalom. We see many examples of healing miracles in the uh, Bible through Jesus' ministry. Sickness and disease and disability uh, being overcome through word and touch and through some rather bizarre activities at times uh, which we looked at last time. As we've said, God's name is, one of God's names is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. So it should be no surprise to us that we see miracles of healing because it's a revelation, it's a revealing of God's name and nature. It's who he is, it's what he does. There's the purpose of God. God does not design and desire that we experience sickness and illness in our bodies. We are heading towards a day when there will be no more sickness, no more disease, no more death. Heaven is not like that. And that is why uh, God breaks in to show us what he desires. Deliverance, casting out demons. There is no evil in heaven. Evil gets cast out of heaven. When the disciples were operating and people were being healed and delivered and set free, Jesus says he saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So no surprise that we see deliverance miracles. Raising the dead. I think there are only about seven um, raisings the dead throughout the Bible. So it's quite a rare thing. Jesus does three. Jesus raises Lazarus. Jesus raises Jairus' daughter and Jesus raises the son of the widow of Nain. So raising the dead. Because in heaven there is no death. And in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, we experience eternal life. We are going to live forever in new resurrection bodies. We see Jesus bringing authority over nature he calmed storms he walked on water peter walked on water for a little bit jesus walked across a lake i don't know how he did it whether god froze the water (laughs) that's 
on the part he walked? I don't know. Did an angel hold him up? Did you ever think about these things? How do miracles work? My brain works. I can't. I like to understand things. I kind of think, what might have been going on there? <coughs> or more likely, it's just his faith held him above the laws of gravity. Because while Peter had faith, he walked on that water, but when he began to doubt, he sank. Jesus has authority over water. The calming the storm as well is... Uh, there's, there's an idea there that that's a rebuking of the storm. This was a demonic storm that had uh, arisen uh, to put the life of the disciples in danger. So what's the purpose? Authority invested in Christ, but also protection for people and those he loves. We've seen many examples throughout Scripture of Scripture testifying how he brings protection for his beloved children and his people. And then we see miracles of provision because God is Jehovah Jireh, another one of his names, the God who provides. And we see miracles of provision. Jesus fed the 4,000, Jesus fed the 5,000. Then there was food left over, 12 baskets of food left over. We see a number of miraculous catches of fish. We see Peter going to catch a fish, and in the fish's mouth is exactly the temple tax that needs to be paid for Peter and for Jesus. The only miracle Jesus did for himself in some respect. And also, I've added it since, but when I sent this out, I forgot to put it on, but I was thinking about it. Jesus turned water into wine. These are all miracles of provision because God is a provider for his people. God doesn't just provide for his people. God provides for the whole planet, doesn't he? He keeps it running. He waters it. He sends the sunshine. It experiences his blessing. God's provision is revealed through miracles. They all point to who God is and what he's doing in this world and on behalf of his people. Jesus did 37 that are recorded. As I've suggested, I think he did an awful lot more. We clearly see, even before his death, he sent the disciples out and they started to do miracles. And then in the Acts of the Apostles, the miracles continue to his people. Right up until the uh, last chapter of Acts. And Acts is an unfinished book. We are living in the last chapter of Acts. And God is still doing miracles in and through his people to this day. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The miracles bring glory to God. And when we see that so often when Jesus does an incredible healing or deliverance or a miracle, people glorify God. So for some, it helps them focus on God. For others, it doesn't. It's, it depends where your heart is at, doesn't it? But Jesus promised that those who believe in him will do greater works than him. And so we, we will be able to operate in and through the power of the Spirit in a similar manner to him. Why will there be greater? Well, we're not, Jesus was located to one place <coughs> in Judea at one time. But the resurrected, ascended Jesus who's poured out his Spirit and lives in his people is spread all across the globe and can do miracles in multiple places all across the globe 
all at the same time. So the frequency and the geographical possibility is greatly increased. So that's one of the reasons why we will do greater works than him. And God wants to do those works in me and in you, through me and through you. But also, there are some quite incredible things we begin to see in the Acts of the Apostles. Peter's shadow heals people. Paul's apron or handkerchief, if people touch it, if it's passed around, they get healed. It's incredible stuff. I know people touched the hem of Jesus' cloak. Jesus, people touched Jesus and got healed. But this is on a slightly different level again. So there's an element in that as well. And there are incredible things that God will continue to do in our day. This is the apostles' testimony as they pray, as they are threatened by the uh, Jewish authorities and the Jewish religious leaders. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. They pray, God shakes the building whether everybody experienced an earthquake or whether there was just a localized shaking of the building. Something miraculous happened as God's people looked to him to fill them with boldness so that they could carry out what Jesus had commissioned them to do. We need to keep looking to the Lord to fill us with confidence, to fill us with courage, and to give us boldness to go for it in Jesus' name. God wants to work in you and in me in and through miraculous ways. Signs and wonders and miracles are a validation of the gift and office of apostleship. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 12. That is how a genuine apostle shows the fruit of his ministry. As we've said, miracles throughout the book of Acts the book of Acts acts with some mighty miracles. Remember, Paul gets shipwrecked and they're on the island being cared for by the islanders who are compassionate and caring towards them and there's a fire and they're having some food and a viper jumps out the fire and fastens itself on Paul's hand and they immediately think he's going to die. He's being punished because he's a murderer. That was their mentality and thinking in those days, but Paul is absolutely fine. And when they see that, they invite everybody on the island who's ill or got disease, and Paul prays for them, and they all get healed. So Acts ends with an explosion of miraculous activity, and that miraculous activity has been continuing throughout the history of the church and continues in our day. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will not change, he is not changing, and he will never change. He did miracles then, he does miracles now, and he will keep doing miracles until that great and glorious day when heaven and earth are fully united. Jesus comes back and the kingdom comes in all its fullness. Life is full of miracles, both small and and large. The miracle of life itself, the fact that there's exactly the amount of oxygen within the air we breathe to keep us alive. The miracle of birth with all its dangers and difficulties. Every time a child is born, it's a wonderful miracle. Everyday miracles all around us. I'm sure you could give many, many testimonies of unexplained things that happened in your life. No, I can. I know when we looked at this just before Christmas, Mike gave a testimony of finding a ring on a massive beach even when the waves have run over the sand. God 
I reckon every one of you can give a miracle testimony. It's great when we share them together. It builds us up and it encourages us. It lifts our faith level. And it's important we keep doing that. That's why it's so important to share testimony. But even more important that the testimonies are shared outside of the church so that the good news of Jesus is being shed abroad. And so my encouragement to you, my challenge to you this morning is whatever miracle work God has done in your life, don't share your testimony with somebody outside of Christchurch over this coming week. Tell them the good things that God has done for you. Because Jesus continues to do big, big, extraordinary miracles in our day, and he continues to do little everyday miracles. Many of them we don't even see or notice every single day of our lives. Everyday miracles are frequent and daily. Extraordinary miracles are rare, but when we see them, they're wonderful. They lift our faith in a way that the everyday miracles don't. <coughs> Appreciate them. Anticipate them. Have faith for them. Have expectation. I've told you numerous times over how when I was a 17-year-old, I was rushing into the road, and I was stopped dead in the middle of the road. I don't know what did it. Some force just stopped me, and a car went whooshing past at 60 miles an hour. I felt the wind of it, but it did not touch me. And my mother was on the pavement screaming her head off. She thought I was a goner. It's like I hit an invisible brick wall in the middle of the road. I believe an angel stopped me. I didn't mind going again. How did this happen? <laughs> <coughs> we have a house. We had no money. When we bought our house, we did have money. We didn't have enough money when we bought our house. We took some advice from people we thought were wise and uh, of integrity, and it wasn't that wise, and it wasn't very integrous. We made a mistake. But so we ended up having to get a last-minute mortgage, and we didn't have quite enough money. We were praying about it. We had some help from some very uh, good people and professionals. And we were short on money. And two days before we had to buy the house, the money arrived in the post. We hadn't told anyone that we were short on the money. But the exact amount of money we were short arrived in the post. We tried for seven years to have children without success. So then we started to get some advice and help from the medical professionals. They did various tests on Jean and on me. And they were very negative about both. I remember sitting opposite the doctor. He said, I'm very, very sorry. There's nothing we can do for you. About two months later, I come home and Jean's jumping up and down. Within 20 months, we had our wonderful son. God is good. We believe they're both miracle children. Remember, we went to Zambia and Congo, and uh, we were having some difficulty getting the Congo visas. And uh, a week beforehand, we finally discovered from the embassy that you had to go down in person to visit them. We had no way of doing that. So in faith, we sent off the applications and four passports Mine and Jean's, Alan and Sue's. No acknowledgement that they'd arrived. But uh, we had a friend going down to London who offered to call in at the embassy. And she did on the Friday. Um, no, we had a friend in London who said they'd go to the embassy, and they did. And somehow, in some way, the embassy dealt with them on our behalf. She was handed the passports, met a friend who was just happened to be in London bring those passports back, and we, were, we received them the day before we had to fly out to Congo. God did some extraordinary things in Congo. One of the reports we had from one of the meetings was somebody we had prayed for had gone home and passed a mat down the toilet. God had healed them of that horrific thing in their body, and there's lots of other amazing things God did on that trip. But we nearly never got there. But in a through a miracle of provision, the visas and the passports 
came back. And on mission trips in Hungary and in Africa, we've seen God doing incredible things. We could only have dreamed of. And that <coughs> God will always do more than we could ever hope or imagine. Miracles of healing, miracles of deliverance, miracles of provision. There are times we may well raise the dead. Interestingly, throughout the Bible, where people are raised from the dead, it is always young people whose lives are being set up. And miracles over nature. God will do those kind of things. Be ready to share your testimony this week outside of the church. Always be ready to pray for God, our miracle worker, to be active in and through people's lives. We've seen some incredible answers to prayer, haven't we? Things we could have never hoped for or imagined as we've been praying together faithfully over these weeks. Let's pray and give thanks to our miracle working Father, we thank you that you are a miracle-working God. Jesus, that you are the miracle maker and worker. It's who you are. It's what you do. And we are so glad and we are so thankful for your miraculous activity in our lives and through our lives. Father, help us clearly to bring to remembrance those miraculous times you have intervened. But more than that, O oh Lord, use us to bring about miracles in our day. Father, so that you might be glorified, that your kingdom might come in greater measure, but more than that, that people might come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We thank you, O oh miracle-working God, that you are here in our midst this day and that with you and through you Nothing is impossible. Father, increase our faith afresh. Convince our minds. Embolden our hearts. And use us, O oh Lord, to bring your miracle power to this earth. This we ask for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.